Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It is Monday, the uh, 12th of February, 2007. The market's closed. And the S&P 500, as measured by the spiders here on the screen right now, did lose uh, 53 cents, or about 0.3%, uh, as it added to uh, last Friday's sell-off here. So we've now got the market below the, the high uh, from this prior attempted breakout that failed over here. But then we saw that the market did come back up above that level once we had the Federal Reserve meeting uh, take place. So the market broke below that 144 level. And as I said on Friday, that uh, it, the market is sending a message to us now that it, it, the, the way I'm interpreting it is that we have to be very careful in here. So it looks like probably a test of that 143 level that we've been looking at on the um, half hour and the hour chart here. Um, is probably in the uh, in the short term uh, future for this market. If we take a look at uh, actually the low to high here, what we can see is that 143 level is actually a 0.618 percent uh, or 61.8 percent retracement of that move from the low here on uh, 26th or so of January to the recent high. Uh, just last week that we saw. So uh, the 143 level does look like a logical place that we might expect to see some support. It is a prior level of resistance as well, and of, again, that two-thirds retracement area. So it doesn't mean we go ahead and buy there, but it might mean that uh, if you do have any shorts in here, and I suggested that you know breaking below the 144.35 level might be a good area if you're willing to go against the primary trend on the daily time frame, but that might be a good area to sell short. And I would think if you are short the S&P 500 and it drops down towards there, that would be a good place to uh, at least tighten those stops up significantly. So um, the short-term trend is down in the S&P 500, and we have to respect that and go slow if we're trading the long side of the market. As for the NASDAQ, the uh, NASDAQ 100, this is looking like a failed, but well, it is a failed move past this inverted head and shoulders pattern that we were looking at. We saw that on Thursday, or rather Friday, how it failed. And this was that head and shoulders pattern, inverted head and shoulders pattern that I was talking about. And once you make a plan, you don't have to commit to it. That's what stops are all about. The plan was to buy above here, and hopefully the market was going to make it up towards about 53.20, I think, was our objective. However, once it starts breaking down, you got to listen to the message of the market. Forget your opinion. Listen to the message of the market. The market says it's going lower. If you want to hold on to your money, sell the stock, you know, sell the market, sell your cues. And uh, in this case, um, it was breaking below at 44.20, 44.30 area. So this has, to, in my mind, a lot bigger ramifications than the S&P 500. Now, realistically, we are still within a range here, and that range is uh, down, you know, 42.75, 43 uh, is is the support. So I think that that makes a good target, maybe even for this week, um, but. Uh, it might be a little bit too aggressive. The, the market is getting sold off pretty quickly. We do have some uh, shorter-term support potential in here near this 4360 level. So I would say you want to probably go slow uh, for the next few days and just take it on a stock-by-stock -stock basis. That's uh, a lot of times the best way to, to, to look at the market is just on a stock-by-stock -stock basis. If you look at the, um, the mid-caps, let's take a look at these guys here, MDY, the mid-cap spiders, um, you know they they're they're pulling back too although they're they're right at the the rising 10 day moving average so just uh, looking like a normal pullback within a primary uptrend so far nothing really to get concerned about no reason to be short this group but it, because the short term trend is lower it means that the sidelines is the best place to be overall in the mid caps right now so um, again it's it's more back to a stock picking environment in here the semiconductors, they made it up a little bit further uh, than I expected um, before they were going to fail. I was expecting them to fail, if you remember, uh, near that declining 50-day moving average. They came up higher than that, but it does look like the sellers are now back in control. And the semiconductors making these lower highs and lower lows, um, looking for maybe, again, just, you know, this market's a mess. Maybe they come down towards that 33 level. It looks reasonable to me to expect to pull back down towards that area. Let's take a look at the stocks we've been involved in. So overall, my theme for the market is take it slow. We're maybe at a little turning point here short term. So um, let's uh, just uh, take it slow until we get better uh, message from the market sent to us. 
and Cirrus, Cirrus Logic, we got involved at 790. I had suggested st uh, tighten your stop up to 788. So we're stopped out with a two cent loss in that one. Um, Alexion, we got short last week at $40.95 as it broke down. And we had uh, lowered our stop to $40.10. So we did get stopped out right over here. You can see that uh, it spiked up on the open, although it did get lower, go lower during the day. We were stopped out with a gain of $0.65 cents in there. So um, it turned out to be a, a decent little trade. CNQR, I had uh, written in the comments section, too, some of the fundamental information about this stock but there was no reason to get involved in this you know the, if there's a good fundamental story that's nice new that's nice to know that's good information but that information isn't going to help you until the stock starts going higher again and what we were looking for was a buy above seventeen dollars and ten cents it never traded above seventeen dollars and ten cents so there was no reason to get involved in this one we'll continue to keep an eye on it but uh no reason to be involved in this one either we're looking to buy uh, shares of Insight Enterprises, symbol NSIT, above $20.25. So the market told us, hey, hold on to your cash. No reason to get involved here right now. Um, same with Hoku, H-O-K-U. We're looking to buy on strength for this one. And you can see that buying on strength is a, a logical solution. You, you know, people who buy pullbacks, in my mind, it just doesn't make any sense at all. You're just guessing and stabbing. Like the S&P right now, are you going to buy at... Uh, um, at 143 because that's a two-thirds retracement it doesn't make sense to me let's watch that 143 level see if it finds support and then like we saw in here it looked like the stock was finding support near 560 but if it gets above 570 that will have made a higher high and that's where we would want to get involved so there was no reason to get involved there either um, we did get involved on the short side in all state late in the day well, what I suggested was selling the stock short below $61 a share. So that occurred right here. Let's put our high just above today's high. Let's say $61.30 is where we want to put our stop in uh, Allstate. So that's a uh, $0.30 cent risk on a $60 stock, pretty low risk. Uh, Kamiko, symbol CCJ, we wanted to sell this stock short below $37.15. We got that happen early on. And our stop was to be at 37.55. The high today was 37.51. So that was a good place to put the stop as it kept us in here. And the stock finished nicely lower down at 36.50. So that's um, you know 65 cents profit so far. Let's try and protect that by lowering our stop to 36.75 cents in CCJ.